Rashut Malad Atra, Rav Simon Tov Shlita, thank you very much for inviting us. And it's a pleasure to be here. Such a beautiful crowd that came here tonight. And tonight is a special night. It's a special night because tomorrow we're going to have a very interesting phenomenon. And that is the eclipse that we're going to be experiencing, something that wasn't seen in America going shore to shore from one end to the other end for 99 years. So that's a very special event, and it deserves a little bit understanding. We spoke a little bit in the other shiurim about it, but we're going to touch today, Bezat Hashem, a different angle to understand some things that the Zohar, the Kabbalah says, a little bit things behind the scene, not that we know so much, we understand so much what the Zohar says, but some things are even good for our understanding, and we try to touch on that. And that is something very interesting. First of all, it's interesting that you'll find that the, the way the, this, uh, this eclipse, the solar eclipse comes, it goes from the east, right? It goes all the way from the west to the east. That's the way it goes, which means it's, it comes from all the way from the left. Does that have any significance? Does that mean anything? We'll try to touch on that. Now, obviously, you can say that this is the way it is. This is the way that, uh, that the astronomy works. But that we touched already in the previous show. We want to ask the questions that all the Mephoshim ask, the same question, just to, uh, to open up the discussion today. The, the question goes like this. You have something that comes out very interesting in the Gemara, in Sukkah, the Fkaftet. The Gemara over there tells us the reason that you have a solar eclipse, or any kind of eclipse, a lunar eclipse as well. You have something very interesting, and that is, that is caused, says the Gemara, because of four different sins. That's what the Gemara brings down over here. I'll read you the Gemara, and we see what's hard about this Gemara. This Gemara comes out a little bit complex because We'll see the questions on it. It says like this. The Gemara says, Tanu Rabbanan, b'shil arba dvarim chama loka. Because of four different reasons, you have a, a, a solar eclipse. Al av beddin shemet ve'eno nispat ka'alacha. You have av beddin. Av beddin means you have a beddin and you have the head of the beddin, which means you have an extreme Talmud Chacham that was niftar, he died, he passed away, and the eulogy was not done correctly. And therefore, because of that, says the Gemara over here, that you have a, a, a solar eclipse. Very interesting. Secondly, it could come because, says the Gemara, Nara Morasa, Shetzaka Ba'ir Ven Moshiala. Nara Morasa means a lady that is not fully married yet. She's in the between stage of Erusin and Nisuim. Erusin means that she got the ring already. That's called Erusin, Kiddushin, just like we do today under the chupa. Today we do, we do both together, one after the other. But in, in reality, they used to do one, only the Kiddushim or the Erusin, and wait 12 months until you finalize it and do the Nisuim. What would they do by, by the Kiddushim? By the Kiddushin, the husband would give his wife a ring, and he would say, Now she's married. She's married. But he can't bring her home yet. Until when? Until, until the Nisuin. And they usually, usually used to wait 12 months in order for her to get ready whatever she needs, jewelry, clothing. Same thing for the husband. He would, he would also get things ready, the house, whatever's needed. So over here, if this woman would be violated between the Kiddushin and the Nisuin, that's called Nara Meorasa, right? That's what it says over here. Shetzaka Bair, she screamed in the city, which means while she was violated, she screamed in the city, she's asking for help, nobody comes to help her. Thirdly, it could come because of Mishkav Zachor. And fourthly, Al Shnei Achim Nishpach Daman, Two brothers that died together at the same time. Those four events could bring a, a solar eclipse. Very interesting. So the question is obvious. All the question that all the Mefarshim ask over here. You take a look at all the Mefarshim on this Gemara. 
they ask the following question. Solar eclipse is something you can calculate way ahead of time. Thousands of years ahead of time, you can calculate when it's going to be exactly. They know today exactly on the second when it's going to come, where it's going to hit, exactly where it's going to be. The, the, that path that we call path of totality, they know exactly where is the dark side, which is called umbra, and where is partial eclipse, which is called panam penumbra. All these things they can calculate to the exact. So therefore, it's not that those things could bring a, an eclipse. Rather, it's calculated already from before. These are natural events. These are the questions that all the Mefarshim ask over here. And we want to touch on the Ben Ishchai and see. Ben Ishchai usually goes, according to Kabbalah, try to open up a door to what the Zohar tells us over here, things that are fascinating over here. And this is the way it goes. Ben Ishchai, in Ben Yoyada, he writes that that's not the way you read the Gemara. Ben Ishchai says, the way you read the Gemara over here is the following. You say that Be'etzem, you have Mekatregim in Shamaim. Those Mekatregim in the Shamaim come to be Mekatreg on a regular basis, but they never heard. Whenever there's a solar eclipse, they are able to be heard. Now, in Shamaim, they come in front of Bed Din Shalmala. They say, look, there's four Averot that's being done. They make a trek dafka on those four things. We'll see why. But now that they make a trek on those four things, and they say, look at those four Averot that's being done by Am Israel, now all of the sun in Bed Din Shalmala, they are heard. Their, their conviction goes ahead, and a punishment comes about. How does it happen? It happens when there's a solar eclipse. And we need to understand why. What is it so special at the time of a solar eclipse that the mazikim are able to be mekatreg? Why is it that being heard? And why those four things? These are the questions we want to try to answer tonight. So in order to answer this, let's go straight to the Zohar HaKadosh. Zohar HaKadosh in Parashat Pikudei, tells us some ideas of Cheta Egel, how it was done, why it was done, how did it happen. It says like this. The Zohar asks over here a question. Why is it that we found that in, in the Egel, that Dafka Egel was done? And why not a different shape? Why Egel, which means a calf, a golden calf, why Dafka that shape and not any other shape? Let's see the words of the Zohar. Tachaze, come and see. When Am Israel made that sin, and they caused that avera to happen, my tama egel as the Zohar. Why did it happen to be in the shape of a golden calf? Why not a different shape? Vitema says the Zohar, if you're going to tell me, you know why. Because they decided it should be Egel. That's what they wanted. They wanted the shape of Egel. Maybe they are the one that decided it should be Egel. That's not true. They don't care. Give us any shape of anything, they said. Just give us something that would lead us. Aaron, when he heard what they wanted, he just wanted to buy time. He just wanted to delay. So he said, you know what? Gather all the gold. Bring all the gold from the women. Let's take it. Put it into the fire. And slowly, slowly, we're going to try to create some kind of shape. With that, he'll buy a little bit time. And meanwhile, Moshe Rabbeinu would come. What happened was, you all know, that as soon as it was thrown into the fire, boom, an egel came out. Uh, says the Zohar el Avadai, Avita it haved kedechaze. The thing happened correctly, and we'll explain, says the Zohar. The Amisitra de Dava Nafka Susfita. When you have gold, anybody that's in the gold industry, in the gold business, he knows that when you try to fix the gold, you try to, what is it called? You try to, uh, to purify the gold, right? What happens? You have over there dust that comes out. You have residue that comes out of the gold. That is misitra de davka, de dava nafka susfita. 
יוצא פסולת וסיגים. When you try to get the gold clean, to purify the gold, on the process, dust, what we call residue of the gold, comes out. Kaditbarir dava umitaman mitpashte kol inun sitres mala. Unbelievable. Zohar tells us over here how all the disasters, all the bad things that happen in the world come about. How do they happen? Says the Zohar over here that when the sun shines, it shines on the gold. We'll see soon. It shines on the gold and it creates gold. It shines on the earth, it creates gold. At the process of creating gold, there's also residue, there's also dust of the gold. And all the mazikim, all the shadim, all the ruach ra'ah, all the bad things in Shamaim that create, that, that are there to hurt us in this world, to damage us, to cause us all the sorrow and everything bad, is created at that moment. Umitaman mitpashte kol inun sitres mala. All the left side is created. Pay attention to the term left. Sitre smala, left side. Kadit barer davak, I'm translating from the Matok Vidvash. Kshenit barer nizdake chazav, klomar mikvurat hekdusha bishtalshedut hamadregot, klipot yotzim, klipot achitzonim. All these klipot, all these mazikim come out from the left, from the left side. מתאמן מתפשט לכל עינון סיטרה שמאלה, משם מתפשטים כל אותם החיצונים של צד השמאל. ודעינון היתוכה דאוסוס פיתא דדאווה, from the היתוך, which means from purifying the gold, all these dust comes out, ומתפרשן לכמה סיטרין. And now from that you have levels of, le on, on top of levels of מזיקים. Good, that's the first point. Remember that point. That the Zohar tells us, you have the shine signing, sh shining, we'll see it soon that he says that openly. You have the sun shining on the earth. When it's in the strongest time of the day that it shines, the heat is the strongest. At that time, gold is created. Now, I'm not sure if the Zohar means literally that the gold is created. But maybe over here it means spiritually that the Tehara, the Kedusha, the gold, the gold rese resembles Kedusha, so does the sun. But at the time it brings that Kedusha down and creates the gold, at that exact time also you have within the gold also the dust that comes out. The dust are those mazikim that come to hurt the world. Anything that is red, Gavan de Dava has the color of the gold. Kaima beture katshim sha betukfe, they created when the sun is the hottest. Begin the tukva de shimsha, ach ze dava, volid le beara. Which means, and I'm, I'm translating again, kol elu achitzonim, all these chitzonim mazikim, sheesh lahem marae adom, shu gavan zav, em kochot a sholtim beshara va shemesh la zik levne adam. They come out at the heat of the day from the sun in order to hurt people. And they are, they are created and they are at the top of the, of the mountain. Kaime beture. Hem shedim animtzaim baharim umitgashmim betokef ha-shemesh. They are created at when the sun shines. Vehem mazikim kachim sha betukfe. When the sun is in the middle of the day, which means it's right on top of the sky. At 12 o'clock in the afternoon, when the sun is shining the most, that is when the sun creates Gold, and at the same time, it creates as well the mazikim. Begin the tukva de shimsha ach ze dava v'olid le be'ara. Tokef ha-shemesh mare al zav v'olid oto ba'aretz, ke'en, klomar, ke'en sh'teva ha-shemesh lo'olid zav, kach tivo le'ashlit et elu ha-shedim sh'u betokfo. This is the Zohar. Second point that the Zohar told us, how it shines, how it creates. Now pay attention to the last thing that the Zohar says over here. Ve'ahu de memana. Who's the one in charge? You know, in the Shamaim, you have in some, some uh, Sarim that's in charge of everything. You have Sarim that are in charge of the Umot Olam. You have Sarim that are in charge of different things. You have Sarim that are in charge of the different countries. You have also a Sar that's in charge of doing that process. Who's the, who's the Sar? Who's the angel that creates and makes this process? Says the Zohar. The one in charge. 
כן עגל, מפני שהוא מצד שמאל, כן, פני השור שבשמאל. Pay attention what's going on over here. You have that sar, you have that angel in shamayim, he's in a shape of an egel, a kof, a calf. And that is because in the Merkava in shamayim, in Yechezkel, you start Yechezkel, you see that it says over there about how the Merkava is shaped up. And you have on the left side of the Merkava, the shor. That's what Yechezkel said, Anavi Yechezkel, right in the beginning of the Sefer. That side that has the shore creates a galim, creates calf. That's the reason it's on the left, and that's the reason it's shaped as a calf. And the Zohar says that is the reason that the calf was created at the time of the Chet Egel, because he created something in his own shape. Ve'ikre ketev yashut tsaoraim, ha'shedim ha'yotzim, those angels, those shedim, those spirits that come out, they called ketev, lefi she'emorgim. Ketev means killing. They are ready to kill, they are ready to damage, they are ready to cause terrorist attacks, they are ready to cause 9-11s, they are ready to cause tsunamis, they are ready to cause disasters in the world. And they are in the shape of an egel. Ve'danafka migo egla itucha sum kadedava. Comes out from that a shape of a calf. Beautiful. Beautiful Zohar. Let's summarize what the Zohar told us. These are the words of the Zohar. This is not some kind of mefaresh, acharon, not even rishon. This is a Zohar kadosh. This is Sitrei Torah, which means if you want to know what happens behind the scenes, we see the world, and we see a very beautiful world. We see, we see walls, and we see chandeliers, and we see light and fixtures and, and chairs. And, but the Zohar comes to tell us what happens behind the scene, how everything works out. And the Zohar says like this, if you have, during the day, all kind of things that happen that are not good, you should know that this is the system. What happens is you have a sun. The sun shines on the earth. The sun shines on the earth, gold is created. Gold is created, together with that, residue is created. Residue is, the gold itself is the Ruach Tara, is the Ruach Kedusha. These are the good things that come up in the world. The residue is the things that, are come, that come out bad in the world. Those are the Shadim. They re represent the bad angels, the, the Mazikim, those that come to hurt people. The Zohar says over here that who's in charge of doing all this process? There's an angel in Shamaim that in the shape of an eagle. And therefore, at the time of the eagle Azav, when Aaron took from everybody the gold that's supposed to be from the Kedusha, he threw it into the fire. Fire is the very strong heat. Came out of there, says the Zohar. He explains this, the Zohar inside. We didn't quite read it. The psolet, all the dirt, all the dust came out at that time at the shape of an egel. And that's why there was egel hazav. That's what the Zohar says. Now, once we learn that, which tells us beautiful things, we can go to the next step. The next step is going into the day that the Egel was created. That was done, as we're speaking over here. And if you take a look at the Torah, Parashat Kitisa, the Torah tells us something very interesting. I'd like to ask you, anybody knows, where is the first solar eclipse that we have recorded in the Torah? When did it happen? We, we, we saw that in the Nevi'im, you'll find few of them. You'll find in your El that he speaks about such a thing that will happen in the future. In others, um, uh, Nevi'im as well, where things will happen in the future, sometimes. In the, but where is the first eclipse that is recorded in the Torah? Believe it or not, many people don't pay attention to it, is? Makat Choshech was not a solar eclipse. Makat Choshech was a Makat Choshech. Hashkadosh Baruch Hu had light for the Jews, and for the Goyim, he made Choshech. But the, the sun was shining regularly. So we have a beautiful thing. I need a Chumash. Anybody? I'm sorry, it's not the rabbi's job. You pay open Parashat Kitisa, and over there, Rashi and Chazal, Chazal in Gemara Shabbat Peitet explains that at the time of the Egel, thank you very much, at the time of the Egel, Am Israel were waiting for Moshe Rabbeinu to come after 40 days. Moshe Rabbeinu was supposed to come when? 
on the sixth hour of the day, because this is when he went to Shamayim. He told him, 40 days, I'll be in Shamayim 40 days, I'm coming back 40 days. And the nation's waiting, nothing's happening. The sixth hour comes, everybody participating, Moshe Rabbeinu's coming, he said. Moshe Rabbeinu said sixth hour, if he doesn't come sixth hour in a minute, so that means something happened, something's wrong. Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't lie, Moshe Rabbeinu is Ish Elohim. He, 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 was, he told us exactly when to come out of Mitzrayim. On the second, we came out of Mitzrayim by Chatzot Alayla. So what does it mean over here that he would, he would be late? Impossible. Says the Torah, Vayara Am ki boshesh Moshe laredet minahar. Uh, the nation saw that Moshe Rabbeinu was late. He didn't come down from the, from the mountain yet. Vayikael Am ala Aaron, vayom elav. The nation came to Aaron and told him, Kum ase lanu Elohim, asher elchu lefanenu, ki zeh Moshe ha'ish asher elanu meret v'israim. Lea danu ma'aya lo. Let's make now a different leader. We don't know what happened to Moshe Rabbeinu. That was the interaction between the nation and Aaron. But the words, ki boshesh Moshe, Moshe was late, is a little bit strange, the word boshesh. And therefore, Chazal, pick on that word and say the following. Take a look at Rashi over here. Ki boshesh Moshe. What does he mean, boshesh Moshe? Rashi says, a second perush that it means Beshesh, on the sixth hour. Sixth hour, they saw Moshe Rabbeinu is not coming down. Ki kshala Moshe la'ar, amar lahem, lesof 40 yom ani ba betoch shashahot. Moshe Rabbeinu told them, I'm coming exactly 40 days. So that means on the sixth hour, Moshe Rabbeinu is supposed to be back. Ki zvurim hem shoto yom shala min aminyan. Vehu amar lahem shlemim 40 yom velelo imo. He told them, he really meant a complete 40 days. What have happened on that moment, on the sixth hour of the day? Pay attention to what Rashi tells us. Fascinating. Ba Satan. The Satan himself came to do his work. He made Irvuvia in the world. He made the world dark. The place was completely dark. Dmut choshech ve'afela v'irvuvia. That's what Rashi tells us. That's what the Gemara tells us. That at that time there was complete darkness. Lomar v'adai Moshe met lekach ba'irvuvia la'olam. Amar lem met Moshe shekvar ba'u sheshot ve'lo ba. Now Rashi wants to know. Maybe you would think that there was a lot of clouds. There's two ways how to make the world dark. One way is to bring the, cr the cloud. If Rashi would think this was a nest, that the Satan was able to create some kind of miracle, so Rashi wouldn't ask the question, maybe there would be a, a cloudy day. What's the question? Maybe it was a cloudy day. The Satan is able to do the place dark. He made the place dark. Rather, the Satan used some natural forces. Rashi asks over here, maybe it was a, you, you might think it was a cloudy day. Don't think it was a cloudy day. So therefore, it's not that. So what's the other choice? If it's not a cloudy day, and Rashi indicates and tends to tell us that it was something natural, because that's what he's asking, why it, it, it wasn't cloudy. So therefore, what's the other possibility? That there was over here a lunar uh, 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 solar eclipse. Solar eclipse, that's it. Likui chama. That's the only possible other way. So we found the likui chama over here. So that is very interesting. We found that in the time of the Egel, there was a likui chama, solar eclipse. <coughs> now that we found that there was a solar eclipse in that time, so we can understand a lot of good things. First of all, we understand that at the time the world became dark, we already learned that the night is considered al pi Kabbalah et dinim. It's a time of dinim, dinim kashim. That's why, for instance, at night you don't say slichot, right? Until midnight, you don't say slichot. It's time of dinim. That's why we said you don't give tzedakah at that time. That's why all kind of things you don't do at, that, at the night because it's time of dinim. The time that comes to be rachamim, chesed, 
That is during the day, not at the, not at the night. All of the sun, he made the time night. Dinim, everything became at that time changed within having a time of chesed to time of dinim. Why is this important to know? The Zohar tells us in Parashat Kitisa that the nature of Tum'ah is to be mitbatel to the Kedusha. If you have Kedusha and you have Tum'ah, Tum'ah doesn't have the power to go ahead, fo go forward and damage, to go ahead and do all kind of bad disasters in the world because there's Kedusha that blocks it, that stops it. The Kedusha is much more powerful than the Tum'ah. The derech atumah lit batel bakdusha. That's what it is. You know when that is true? That is true as long as the kedusha is there. Where the kedusha comes from? We said when the sun shines, the, sh the, the, the sun brings down the kedusha together with some residue, a little bit of tumah that comes out of it, that comes to hurt, but doesn't have the power. Because the Kedusha is so much stronger. There's so much more Kedusha in there. But when you have a solar eclipse, something very interesting happens. At that moment, there's no Kedusha anymore. In that moment, there's no Shemesh anymore. There's no sun anymore. Therefore, in that moment, the Tum'ah, the Mazikim, the Ruach Ra'ah, the Shedim, all these Sitra, the Smala, are able to go ahead and do what they want to do. So therefore, a lot of interesting things happen over here. What have happened at the time that there was solar eclipse at the time of the eagle? You know what have happened? Many things. First of all, it says in the Torah over here that what happened was people started to make a party. And the way the Torah calls it, They made a party. That's first of all. Secondly, Vayara Aaron Vayven Mizbeach Lefanav. Aaron saw somebody that was slaughtered. Who was that? Chur. Chur was slaughtered. So those are two things that happened over here. Let's calculate. Who was the Av Betin at the time of, 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 at that time, at the current time? Who was the Av Betin at that time? When Moshe Rabbeinu went to Shamaim, he said to the people, Mi bal dvarim, igashalem. Whoever has any problems in halacha, any argument with his friends, bal dvarim, somebody hurt you, somebody damaged you, you owe somebody money, money, somebody owes you money, go to who? Chur and Aaron. Mi bal dvarim, igashalem. Chur and Aaron. Now, they slaughtered Chur. You know why? Because they wanted to do the eagle, and Chur blocked them. Once he blocked them, they murdered him. They killed him. So first thing that happened at that time was Av Bedin Shemet, as we're saying over here, Velon Ispat Ka'alacha. You have over here Av Bedin that died, and nobody cared about him. That's the first thing. You know what's the second thing that happened? Vayakumu Letzachek. Vayakumu Letzachek. What's the word Letzachek? It's a funny word. It's a strange word. Torah doesn't use this word too much. But Rashi tells us it's found somewhere else. You can find the tzachek somewhere else. Where is that? Says Rashi, Yesh b'mash ma'azeh gilu yarayot. Letzachek means gilu yarayot. Where do we find this? K'mo sh'amar letzachek bi. Letzachek bi. Who said letzachek bi? That's Eshet Potifar. When Yosef was with her at the, at, at, at the house when nobody was there, and she tried whatever she tried and he ran out, she wanted to revenge when Potiphar came home, she told him, You brought somebody over here to do what? Giluy arayot, says Rashi. To do avera with me. Now, if that's the case, Rashi says, Vakumu letzachek means also giluy arayot. But if you take a look, it's very, very precise to what the Gemara says. Why? Because Eshet Potiphar was not able to live with her husband. Why not? Rash, the, the Gemara tells us in Sota that since Yosef ended up in the house of Potiphar, Sakadosh Buhu was makdim refuala makah, since Potiphar was interested to do averot with Yosef, so he made Yosef saris, not, not able to do anymore anything, not with Yosef and not with his wife. She was married, but she wasn't able 
to practice her marriage. She wasn't able to finalize what the marriage is all about. So over here, Vayikumu Letzachek comes to indicate, Nara Meorasa, Shetzaka Ba'ir Ve'en Lamoshia. She is still in the state of Letzachek, just like Eshet Potifar. That's the second thing. Third thing, Giloy Arayot, always, always, you take a look throughout any place you'll find that there was Giloy Arayot, things of, of such a fashion of Letzachek, also has in it Mishkav Zachor. That's common in many, many different places. And fourthly, you'll find something very interesting. How many people were supposed to die at the time of the Egel? Not only Chur, but also Aaron. Because Aaron says over here, Vayar Aaron, Vayiven Mizbeach Lefanav. What did he see? Rashi tells us he saw Chur that was slaughtered. And he understood that if he also tries to stop people from doing the egel and he doesn't go along with them, they'll slaughter him. Now, was Aaron and Hur brothers? They weren't brothers. Aaron was the uncle. Hur was the nephew, correct? But in Torah, an uncle and a nephew are considered brothers. Where do we find this? By Avraham Avinu. He says to Lot, he says to him, Ki anashim achim anachnu, Lot was his nephew. He was the son of Haran, that was the brother of, uh, of, of Abraham Avinu. So you see that these are two brothers. Over here, that's what the Gemara says. Shnei achim shenishpach daman keechad. It's mamash precise to what happened at the time of the Egel. And why is it that it was those four things? We need to understand why is it that it was Dafka those four things. And I think that the reason it was those four things, it's very, very um, nogea to say dafka those. You know why? Because Am Israel are metsuyanim, they specialized in their kedusha. If there's no kedusha, you don't have Am Israel. Am Israel are existing because of the kedusha. But the highest levels of kedusha that if you break that, you break the nation, you break the continuation of Am Israel, are those four things. What are they? First of all, the re, the, you realize that the rabbis are very, very important, have a very, very important role within the community. If you don't have rabbis, you don't have continuation. You know who said that? You all, all of you heard what Rav Yitzchak Yosef said recently. He met with nobody else than Putin. And he was sitting with him. This Rav Yitzchak Yosef said. He was sitting with him and Putin was talking, talking, and telling him all kind of different things about world history, where the Greek were and the Romans and all kind of other things, and they passed away. And then he asked Rav Yitzchak Yosef, he asked him, how did the Jews survive up to today? And before Rav Yitzchak Yosef was able to answer, obviously he wasn't talking to him in Russian, he said he had the Melitz Benotam, he had somebody translating. But before he had a chance to answer, Putin answered for him, and he said, it's all because of your Torah and your rabbis. So Rav Yitzchak Yosef, you can hear him, he, say, he says it himself, he just, he just, uh, he just uh, testified to this. He says that even Putin understands that it's because of the rabbis. So over here, the light, what the Torah says, you, you find the Gemara in, in Baba Batra says that the rabbis are enei aeda. They are the eyes of the nation. They are or olam. They are the light of the nation. So therefore, over here, if you have av bedin shemed venos ispat kalacha, you have a very serious problem. You have over here breakdown of the Jewish Kedusha, the, the, the all foundation of Am Israel is torn apart. Secondly, that's the Kedusha of the house. If you have a woman that's married and she's violated, that breaks down the family. It's a breakdown of a family. And thirdly, the Kedusha, that's the highest Kedusha that everybody understands, that the, the, the utmost Tumah that could be is the Mishkav Zachor. And thirdly, you have over here the Kedushat Tachaim, the life that people die, two brothers that die, that indicates there's, this, there's this some kind of lack in understanding that there is Kedushat Tachaim if two brothers are murdered. It's not like a one-time event. Two brothers that are murdered, that's a very serious thing. So we see that those four things are necessary to say Dafka here. 
Whatever happened over here, we explained that over here, something very interesting happened. At the time that the Kedusha was shining, at the time that the sun was right in the middle of the sky, on the sixth hour, Beshesh, Beshesh, on the sixth hour, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Satan, it says in Rashi, came and blocked the sun. Once it blocked the sun, the Ben Yishchai tells us what have happened. When the sun is blocked, the Mazikim are able to talk. And now they are heard. Up to now, they don't, nobody listens to them. They can be mekatrek, mekatrek, but they are mitbatel to the Kedusha. But once you block the sun, the Kedusha doesn't shine. The Kedusha now is blocked. The Mekatregim can go ahead and be Mekatreg, and they are listened, and they are heard. And what are they heard over? Those things that, those four things that, those are the Yesodot, the foundations of the Kedusha of Am Yisrael. And they come and say, look, Am Yisrael are doing those Averot, look at this. You take a look, and Am Yisrael, they're not respecting the rabbis. Today you have that kind of problem within, within the Jewish nation. There's a lot of people. The disrespect, not the same respect that they used to have in previous generations for the rabbis, for the gdolim. Today, you find many gdolim that people step on them, and they say all kind of things that one is not allowed to say. You have over here the kedusha of the family that today, in the internet age, internet era, the kedusha of the family is being completely stepped on. You have... The third thing that is Mishkav Zachor, that is something that you never seen such a thing in history, that they'll do something, Beresh Galeh, they'll make parades, they'll, 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 they'll legalize all kind of things that were never heard of, things that are, that doesn't make any sense. You have over here what we call Mishkav Zachor, and the fourth thing is that there's murders all the time, that, that it's, 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 it's already not safe to walk in some places around even the Jewish communities in, in Nancy said there's places that are dangerous. And therefore, those things are the things that we're talking about that are so important. But we said that everything comes from the left side, if you remember. The Zohar told us that it's all misitra desmala. What is the sitra desmala comes to represent? That is what we say in the Torah. It says in Irmiya, mitzafon tipata chara'a. The Ramban tells us, Tzafon means the left, the left side. That's what he says. Tzafon, when you take a look at the map, is on top. But the Ramban says, Tzafon and left is the same thing. I'll read you what the Ramban says. It says like this. In the Egel, he writes the following. Tzurat Egel. Why was it the shape of an Egel? We already know from the Zohar why was it the shape of an Egel. But he says the Ramban, Mipnei she Yisrael ayu bamidbar chorev ushmama. Am Israel, when they were in the desert, it was desert, it was deserted, and it was also chorev, which means it was, it, it's like a place of destruction. Once you walk into the desert, you can't survive the desert. Desert is a place, in the time that Am Israel were there, Chazal tell us that whoever went in the desert wouldn't survive. You wouldn't be, it's a one-way street. You get into the desert, it's like a dead end. You can't come out of there alive. Why? First of all, desert in nature doesn't have a, an a ability to survive. You don't have enough water and food, you're not going to make it. Secondly, it's hot. And thirdly, Chazal tell us, the Torah tells us, it's makom, nachash, ve'akrav. Chazal tell us that the nechashim, the snakes, were the size of beams. Imagine you have a beam this size. This is the snakes that were in the desert, and there were many of them. Which means if you go into the desert, Chazal tells us whoever went to the desert wasn't, wasn't able to make it. Because of these snakes, you have, you have the Akravim. Akravim was so big and they were so uh, um, poisonous that if you walk into the desert, you're not making it. Says the Ramban that Tzurat Egel Mipnei Shisrael Ayu Bamidbar Chore Veshmama Vachorban Veshmamot The destruction and the place that is deserted, Leolam Yavomina Tzafon, always comes from the Tzafon, which he explains over here to mean the left side. As it says, Mitzafon Tipatah Chara al Kolish Be'aretz, She'en Akavana Bemelech Bavel Bilvad. Don't think that the Pasuk that it says, Mitzafon Tipatah Chara means from Melech Bavel. When you read Pashut, the Pasuk, it means the Melech Bavel is going to come and attack you from the Tzafon. Don't think that's what it means. Aval 
מן השמאל תבוא מידה דתין לעולם. להשיב על כל יושבי הארץ כמידתם. This is the Ramban, on the פסוק over here, on חטא העגל, פרשת כי תישא ל"ב א'. Ramban says that you should know that what it means, כי מצפון תיפתח right, means really if you take a look, it doesn't mean that from Babel only, it means that from the left side all the bad things would come because on the left side you have מידת הדין, as we explained before, how the מידת הדין comes, because at the time that it shines, it comes from the left, because what's in the left, in the Merkava, you have in the left the shor, and the shor, although the shor is mi sitra de kedusha, but shor gives out children. What's the children of the shor? Egel. Egel is mi sitra de tum'a, and those are, these, he's in charge of bringing out the mazikim. Says the Ramban here, and a kav... והנה, במעשה המרכבה אמר, פני שור מהשמאל לארבעתם. The ax, the shor, is on the left side of the מרכבה. ולכן חשב אהרון כי המחריב יודע דרך מקום החורבן, כי שם כוחו גדול. He knew that when you take the left side, left side has an ability to be the strongest קדושה and the strongest תאומה. ובהיותם עובדים שם לקל, יערע עליהם רוח ממרום כאשר נעצר על משה. That's what happened over here. ממילא היא עושה, זה שאמר, חג להשם מחר, שיהיו העבודות והזבחים לשם המיוחד. אהרון meant to that it should be לשם המיוחד, because he knew that it comes from the left. That's the most קדושה. But what have happened, you could either turn קדושה for קדושה, or you can turn קדושה to טומאה. And that is what the Gra says. Listen to, listen to the words of the Gra. Pay attention over here. The Gra says, the Gaon Mivilna, he says, צפון, The left side, as we explain now, הוא גבורה. מצפון תיפתח הרע, ושם הוא הגיהנום. And the left side, in שמיים, the גיהנום, all the מזיקים, all the bad things come down. ושם הוא מקור, מדור המזיקים. ומשם באה הטובה לעולם. Same place, you have the טובה, you have the מזיקים, you have the bad, and the good comes from the same place. כי אור החסד הגנוז הוא, ואי אפשר לקבלו. ושם הזהב מצפון, זהב יתה, all comes from the gold. Remember that gold? That the, the sun shines on the gold. The gold comes from the left side. Gold could be good, but could have the residue that is bad. That's what Chazal say, הרוצה להשאיר, יצפין. If you want to be rich, יצפין. That's what Chazal said. ממילא, why? Because צפון has in it good, it has in it bad. Let's see the Gemara. The Gemara says in Tsuka Kaftet. The Gemara says, when you have likui chama, you have a solar eclipse. Is it good sign or a bad sign? What is it? First, the Gemara says that bizman shachama loka, when you have a solar eclipse, says the Gemara, siman ra lechol haolam kulo. It's a bad sign to the whole entire world. So it's bad for everybody. Then says the Gemara that bizman shachama loka, siman ra leovde kochavim. And the Gemara before then says, בזמן שהמאורות לוקות, סימן רע לשונאיהם של ישראל. So there's three Gemarot that contradict within the same, like, few lines, one from the, one from the other line. He says like this, first, it's, it's, it's a bad sign for the entire world. Then it says it's a bad sign for Am Yisrael. Then it says it's a bad sign of the Kochavim. What's the answer? Says the Gemara over here, the answer is that it depends the following. It says in the Pasuk, ובכל אלוהי מצרים אעשה שפטים, בזמן שישראל עושים רצונו של מקום, when I'm Israel are doing the will of Hashem, אין מתיירים מכל אלו. You don't have to be afraid from all the signs, שנאמר כה אמר השם, אלא גדי דרך הגויים אל תלמדו, מאותות השמיים אל תחטו. כי חטו הגויים מהם, don't be afraid of the signs that come up in the sky. Don't be afraid of the eclipses that come up in the sky. Who should be afraid? Agoim. That is what the Gemara says, שעושים רצונו של מקום. יחתו הגויים מהם, עובדי כוכבים יחתו ואין ישראל יחתו. Which means like this, comes out beautiful. It comes out that what we're saying, to summarize, put everything together, when you have the eclipse, two things could happen. Either a disaster, a disaster. It says in, in the Navi, Nahum, he brings down that Don't wait for that day that there's going to be uh, 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 the eclipse. Oy, l'mvakshim yom Hashem, lama lachem yom Hashem. It's terrible what's going to be on that day. Terrible. Why are you waiting for such a day that's considered yom Hashem? It's terrible. 
That is, if Am Yisrael are not Osim Retzono Shel Makom. The explanation we said before is because you have the sun shining, and the sun is, the sun is Makor Atov, and it brings out the Zahav, that's the Kedusha. But if you block that, and the Mazikim are able to be Mekatreg, as the Ben Ishchai said, so therefore the Mekatreg on those four things that they are the Kedusha of Am Yisrael, and where they are not normally heard, over here they will be heard, and all the disastrous events will come afterwards. But if they don't have what to be Mekatreg, because Am Yisrael Osim Retzono Shel Makom, so they come, they say, Ribono Shel Olam, there's no... There's no Nara Morasa, and there's no Av Bedin Shalom Nispat Kalacha, and there's no Mishkav Zachor, and there's no Shneachim Shemetu Kechad. So there's no Kitrug. So that, what happens in that time? Who gets it? Umot Olam. Therefore, that time is a critical time when you have a solar eclipse. It's not a simple time, because in Shamaim, there's a lot of things that are happening behind the scene, Machorea Pargod. And it all depends on us, how we take it, what we do with it. Now I want to add one more thing that I think is very cute. It's going to take a few moments, but it's on a little bit different note. And that has to do with the sun as well. And that is Gemara in Chulin Daf Samech. The Gemara over there brings the Psukim that when HaKadosh Baruch who created the world, he created also et HaMeorot HaGedolim. HaKadosh Baruch who created two big lights. Two meorot gedolim, two big lights. Mm -hmm. And right away afterwards in the Pasuk it says, et ha-maor ha-gadol ve-et ha-maor ha-katan. So Chazal ask, and Rashi brings it down, you have to decide. The meorot ha-gedolim are the moon, two meorot gedolim, sun is maor gadol, moon is maor gadol, two lights that are big. So is the moon big or small? First you call it big, then you call it small. So the Gemara says, and Rashi brings it down on the Pasuk, that in the beginning, HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the moon big. That's how HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the moon. But later on, the moon came to complain to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, go make yourself smaller. What happened over here? Let's see the Gemara. Rabbi Shimon Ba'pazi Rami, Rabbi Shimon Ba'pazi asks, K'tiv ha'yas elokim et shnei ha'merot ha'gdolim, the moon is considered me'orot gdolim. U'k'tiv et ha'mahor ha'gadol ve'et ha'mahor ha'katan, now it's called small, how did it become small? It was big. The moon came complaining to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ribono Shel Olam. Could it be that you have two kings that are ruling over one crown? Which means me, I'm the Maor HaGadol, and the Shemesh, the Tzan is Maor HaGadol. We are ruling over the world that is one crown. How could you? You can't have two rulers over one place. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, you know what, you're right. Amar la lechi umati atzmech. Go make yourself smaller. So the moon over here started complaining. What do you mean, HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Oil ve'amarti lefanech ha'davar agun, amit atzmi. I said something that makes sense. Why should I be making myself smaller? So he said, okay. So, may, so, so go and shine in the day and in the night. The moon said, well, I'm shining in the day. Shining in the day doesn't help me. There's light already in the day. Shaga beti aramaya ani. So it says, okay, Am Israel would count for you, yamim, veshanim, they would count according to your, to you, months, and so on and so forth. Then he said, the Kadosh who told the moon, the tzadikim will be called in your names because you are small, so you find tzadikim that are called small also. Yaakov katan, Shmuel katan, David katan, chaz yad elokematva. That uh, Kadosh Baruch Hu saw that, uh, that the moon is not appeased. He's not happy. So what did Kadosh Baruch Hu say? Aviu kapara alai shemiatet yetayareach. Bring a kapara for me that I made the moon smaller. Unbelievable. A Kadosh Baruch Hu is talking over here. He says, bring a kapara for me. I should bring a kapara for myself, an atonement, because I made the moon smaller. And that's the reason that in Sa'ir Shel Rosh Chodesh, it says La Hashem, which means, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Sa'ir Zeya Kapara Al Shemiyat Et Yet Ha'erach. Two questions. First of all, how HaKadosh Baruch Hu changed his mind? What happened over here? Very, very strange. Secondly, I don't understand. What have happened over here? HaKadosh Baruch Hu told the moon, you're not happy? Lechi umati atzmech. Go make yourself smaller. How did HaKadosh Baruch Hu afterwards say, I made the moon smaller. I made the moon smaller. The moon made itself smaller. You don't want to make yourself smaller. Stay big. You're not happy. 
So make yourself smaller. Ma'ati et atzmech. Hakadosh Baruch Hu, lechi u ma'ati et atzmech. It says over here beferush, lechi. Amar lefanav, amar lefanav, rabbonu shalom, rabbonu amar, before him, amar la lechi u ma'ati et atzmech. Go make yourself smaller. So how Hakadosh Baruch Hu later on says that I made you, I made the moon smaller. Aviu kapara lai shani miyateti, shemiyateti et achama. How does that make sense? What do you, what, how do you work this out? This a, this a. It's a very strange thing. I wanted to say the following. You need to know that mi'ateti and ma'ati over here mean two different things. When the moon came in front of a kadosh buchu, the moon said, you know what? We can't be me and the sun both big. So kadosh buchu says, make yourself smaller. Make yourself smaller. The moon was insulted. The moon was insulted. So HaKadosh Baruch needed to appease her, Rashi says. Divrei Nechama, Rashi says. He, came, he started appeasing her. Lechi umshol bayom uvalay lenechama. HaKadosh Baruch starts appeasing her. The moon was insulted. So when HaKadosh Baruch in the end says, Aviu kapara alai shemiateti et ha'yareach, he doesn't mean that I made her smaller physically. Miateti means I belittled her. I made her, I, I, I insulted her. That's called miateti. When you belittle somebody, that's a problem. So Kadosh Baruch comes to teach us something of you. Obviously, Kadosh Baruch is not, he knew what he was doing, but he came to teach us a Musar right in the beginning of Parashat Bereshit, when you open up the Sefer, the very first thing you need to know. When you speak to somebody, make sure that what you say, you are not saying it in any way that could be insulting. Because if you insult somebody, you then try to fix it up. It doesn't fix up. Go and get yourself that, that, that you shine in the den in the night. Doesn't get appeased. The tzaddikim will be called in your name. Doesn't get appeased. Am Israel will count in you. Doesn't get appeased. Why not? Insulted. Try to do that to your wife. You say something to your wife. Try it. And you'll see that you try afterwards to appease her. I'll take you to this vacation. I buy you this. Let's go out. Nothing's going to help. Aviu kapara alai shemiateti et atzmi. Shemiateti et ayareach. I belittled the ayareach. That's what he means. Not that he made a small. He told her, go make yourself smaller physically. But HaKadosh Baruch wanted to teach us with that. When you say such a thing to somebody, it comes with a big cost. There's a cost afterwards. You're not going to be able to fix the problem. You try to fix the problem. I'll buy you. I'll do. I'll take you out. I'll, I'll write you letters. Whatever it is. That doesn't work out. Aviu kapara alai shemiateti et ayareach. That's one pshat. And then the pshat that I asked, what's going on over here? The moon comes to the sun, to a kadosh b'chu, and tells the, the a kadosh b'chu, look, we can't be both big. So what the moon wants? That you make the sun small, right? Makes the sun small. I'll stay big. Everything's good. Then she's happy. Then the moon is happy. Correct? Something very strange. The sun doesn't have any light of his over own. The Zohar says, the levana en la midila klum. The sun is only a mirror. The, the moon is only a mirror. The sun is the one shining. That's the fireball. The moon is only a mirror. En la midila klum. So let's say you make the sun smaller. You made it smaller now, right? The moon, by the way, is 400 so times smaller than the sun. So let's say Akadosh will make the sun 400 times smaller than the moon. What are you gaining? <laughs> you, your light is going to be 400 times less. Everything you have is from the sun. If we're going to make the sun smaller, you're not gaining anything. So one shot we said is that that's the power of jealousy. You know what? I'm not going to have, and you're not going to have. That's it. Tamut nafshim plishtim. He has a car, and I have a car. You know what? I'd rather not him have a car, and I'm willing to give up my car as well. That's the nature of people. That's first thing. Secondly, and that's the more important thing that we want to learn today, and with that we end up, and that is, you need to understand, sometimes a Kadosh Baruch gives you only because of other people. For instance, you have a Gvir, he has a lot of money. Sometimes a Kadosh Baruch gave him money in order to give others. But when he's stingy, he doesn't give others, so a Kadosh Baruch in Rosh Hashanah says, you know what, you're not fulfilling a purpose. Or more likely, Chazal tell us, in Gemara, Bamatziya Perk Azav, that en bracha metsuya beveito shel adam, ela bavur ishto. If you have money in the house, is ul sara etiv bavura. Ul Avraham etiv bavura. Kadosh Baruch gave Avraham because of Sarah. A Gemara says, open Gemara, that everything you have in the house, if you have a successful business, it's why? Because, because of your wife. 
which means if you provide your, your, your wife, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will provide you. And some people say, wow, Rabbi, my wife spends, I can't. She spends on this, she spends on that. So maybe you shouldn't overspend. That is true. But if she buys what she needs and you say, you know what, you have to limit, don't buy this, don't buy that. Remember that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it says in the Gemara, and bracha metzuya beveto shel adam. Bracha means money, dineros. And bracha metzuya beveto shel adam, ela ba'avur ishto. That's what happened to the Levana. She thinks, oh, make the sun smaller. <laughs> what are you talking about? Make the sun smaller. Everything you have is from the sun. You make the sun smaller, you don't have. Same thing is here. If you are stingy, you try to hold back on giving the person that is the source of the bracha, is the source of bringing out the money, could be that you're losing out on the long run and you're not going to profit from that. Chazak